So my villagers are going to be, uh, going to be quite sassy, I think. Because, uh, once again, I've, I've taken a little bit of a break from the game. Just because every time I intended to play it, whatever I was doing in either Metroid or Zelda just went overboard. So since tonight I am waiting for the Nintendo Direct, um, I'm going to dedicate a couple of hours for it. So, you know. We get to see some Tears of the Kingdom gameplay. Good morning, Maywell. In Oh, yes! It's, uh, Tuesday. Yeah, I mean... It's definitely not Tuesday. <laughs> it is... Oh, no it, no, it is still Tuesday for me. For at least another hour. Fine. Uh, Mayor Will, I haven't seen you around lately. How have you been? Don't guilt trip me. Don't guilt trip me, Isabel. Not now. It's barely five minutes in. Don't you dare. Everyone in town has been asking about you too. I'm sure everyone will be glad to see you. <laughs> it's Tuesday, in it? Hello, Nectar. How are things? How's it going? Oh, no. This is all I'm going to get today. All oh, right. Yeah, I've been playing Phantom Hourglass, and uh, I instinctively went to the bottom screen to make the character move, but it's no longer a thing anymore. Anyway, I feel like it's been a while. How? How's uh? I don't. I don't even know what to say. Like how's things? That's it. <laughs> I don't want to say how's life, because that just sounds very, uh, what's the word? Cliché. I got a flower? Well, I mean, how, how else would I, would I phrase it? Just, yeah, sup. <laughs> How you doing? Although I guess when Joy said that, there was a bit of a sexual connotation to that, so never mind. <laughs> also, my character's grown out, uh, hair, so... I have long hair now. I imagine a villager has moved out, because that's what happened last time, so we'll see. Wait, what is this? A nice- oh right, this is for the museum. I'll go deliver that right now. Who the- Who are you? Serrano? At last you came to talk to me. It's been quite a while since I moved into town. I was starting to think you'd never come talk to me. I'm Serrano. Let's forget about the past and just be good friends. Sound good? Great. Achoo! Who are you? When did you move in? Oh. You know what? I think this is the person that decided to set up their house. You had no idea how toxic this game was? Oh no, this game is something else compared to uh, New Horizons. Like, one of my villagers wanted to get into a fist fight with another one. I still don't know the reason. I was gone for a week, I come back, and then she wants to fight another villager. I'm going to be guilt-tripped, so... That's- that's the theme of today. Oh, wow! Hey! We used to have a mare that looked just like you! The resemblance is astounding! Uncanny! In the GameCube one, they just straight up hate you? Okay, I haven't played that. <laughs> Only more handsome and he visited more often, oh boy. Uh, let's make a donation. The art piece. Unless I'm mistaken, that is a nice painting, indeed. What joy it is. 
Well. No. Again, I'm doing it again. I'm 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 using the stylus on the bottom screen to make my character move, and I need to stop doing that. That's not a thing anymore. It's just use the analog stick like a normal person. But yeah, we'll we'll squeeze in a couple of hours of this, and then we'll see. Uh, we'll see the Nintendo thing where they're going to show Tears of the Kingdom. So I want to see that. Otherwise, it's going to get spoiled to shit by the time I wake up tomorrow. <laughs> Today we are holding a special pre-modeling store closing sale. Oh good, they're, pre they're changing. Oh, you don't know what that means, do you? I apologize for how sudden this is, but we'll be closing up our shop on March 29. After that, we'll be closed while we remodel the store. I apologize for the inconvenience. We, ho we ask for your understanding as we c become an even better store, the best. Okay. I mean, I think I still need to keep buying stuff, but for now, let's just not. Maybe now I'll finally be able to get that slingshot. <laughs> I've been playing this game for a month and I still don't have one. Hello, welcome to the handmade fashion palace of the one and only Able Sisters. Say hi. Oh, well, welcome. Oh, that's right. Did you notice that big sewing machine over there? I've been using that machine of mine for quite a while now, so it acts up from time to time. My sisters just couldn't stand that anymore, so they got me that nice one as a new pro nice new one as a present. I can't read right now. It's true, we did, but listen to this. Sis says she can't figure out how to use the machine, so it's just been sitting there unused. This machine uses the camera or QR code. Oh yeah, right, so I can get custom designs. You can also create a QR code for the designs you created. Okay. I'd hate to see this machine to break down just because I tried to use it without knowing how. Plus, I've never really used a sewing machine before, so I'm a little afraid to touch it. Hmm. I got it. You look like you'd be handling with a machine like that. Why don't you get some use out of it in my stead? I'm sure I could learn how to use it if I watch you try it first. Okay. I mean, I might go have a browse, because that's the one thing about this game, is there's a lot of custom designs for it. So I just need to go browse for it. Using a sewing machine is pretty basic. Ah, I mean, I def I've definitely used one because there was a class we had to take in high school that involved using a sewing machine. I have used one. Will I be able to use one as an adult now? Probably not. But, you know... I, I could, I could, uh, I could just look up a video and learn how to use it pretty quickly. Oh, what, that I can't use a sewing machine? Well, like, I've had no real reason to use one. I don't make stuff. And if I've made holes in clothing, they tend to be large enough that warrants me getting just something new, like a You posted the same message twice for some reason. Oh, right. I thought you were just doubling down that it's pretty basic. Just like, no, well, it's basic. It's basic. No, nope. no. Nope. Listen. A 12-year-old could use it right now. No instructions. Just sit them down and they can make clothing. A meteor shower. Unfortunately, I won't be around for the nice sky.
I've missed so many events. Shamrock Day? That would have been cool. Fishing tourneys don't really care. Okay, I did... Mother's Day in the context of where? Mother's Day in Australia hasn't happened. Miss Paula's birthday. The bridge. What you wanted to say was that it's when stuff breaks that it gets complicated. Oh, like when you have to service the, uh, the sewing machine. I mean, that's true of anything that's pretty mechanical. I mean, I have a record player, and I'm I'm a, I'm genuinely afraid of what what's gonna happen if like something goes wrong with it. <laughs> Cause uh, I guess well, like, maybe it's a bit easier now. There seems to be a lot of places that repair them, but for a while it was kind of scarce. You'd have to go to like a specialist shop to repair the things. And because they're mechanical, like the needles are only rated to last a certain amount before you have to get a new one. Oh, oh welcome to my gallery. Come on in and see some art and get scammed. I mean, what? Oh boy, cousin, when was the last time you were here? Well, I'm rather pleased to see you back again. Yeah, that's that's how you do it. Yeah, Red, just guilt trip your customer. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, this week's items are as rare as they come. I'm almost green with envy that I can't buy them all. But remember, we only sell one item per customer, so make your choice very carefully. Okay, I have to look this up, so one sec. We've got a few statues in here today, so... Uh... Uh, new leaf. Okay. We have one painting. Let's just check out the statues first. Okay, so... The discus. If he is holding an object with bumps on it, then it is... Fake. If... Um, I can't see it. Is, it. is that bumpy? Oh no, it's got bumps, yep. Yeah. So... That's fake. Okay. Uh... If she has long hair down to her shoulders, it's fake. If... Her hair goes, covers her ears, it's genuine. That looks like short hair, right? Wait. If the... If her hair go, goes down to cover her ears, but... I mean, does, does that count? The back? Maybe it does... That goes down to her shoulders, doesn't it? Would you say that goes down to her shoulders? I don't know. Okay, what about this one? Um... One sec. If a cloth is hanging down his right shoulder, it's fake. Is that a cloth? That's a cloth, right? Yeah, it is. I, I can't tell. These pixel graphics. Okay, what's this one? Pretty sick what they can do, what, the the sculptors or the graphics? Cause it is crazy the detail that those statues have. Like I've seen documentaries on them, just 
the the imprints are like that look like it's skin. It, it's pretty crazy. The dimples and all that. It's like attention to detail that I feel like is a bit lost these days. Okay, so let me just... This one, I think, is the one. If the man in white is on the left... Oh, okay, it's a fake. So, I mean, the only one that I think... <sighs> I, this is the only one that I'm, I'm uncertain of. The others, I think, are confirmed fake. I mean, worst comes to worst, I'll just put it up in my house and be like, haha, boobs. I'll put it in my mansion. We'll see. I mean, I don't mind if I got scammed. This one, I feel like it is a towel, but it's it's just hard to tell. Okay. Still in awe from Oscar learning about these sculptures. At least you have them in pretty close proximity. Like, I'm in Australia. I, I can't go to a museum and see stuff like that. I have to fly, like, halfway across the world. At least you have them relatively close. Well, is that you? Wow, it's been a while. Have you been busy or what? That's all they had to say. All right, let's get the guilt trips out of the way. They're truly magnificent. Yeah, I would hope to see some of that stuff one day. The thing we have here is just the Great Barrier Reef and uh, Uluru, which is like the giant, giant rock in the middle of nowhere, but it's still pretty cool. As far as art goes, I mean, there's art here, but it's, it's not to the extent of sculptures like that, that have that fine detail. So... does something. Wait! <laughs> Did someone... Someone planted a hole, really? I leave for a week and then my town just... Okay. I'll dig up all the fossils. I think I'm going to prioritize making funds for the bridge. I think now that it's pretty much at the point where pandemic worries are over, I'm going to start thinking about going somewhere in the next year or so. Just haven't really decided what that's going to look like.
I really wanted to do it in 2020, but well, you know. How many fossils do I have? Okay, one more. Probably hidden. How do you even plan a hole? I don't know. I think it's almost like a, like a trap. And so they would have covered it up, but the hole is still there. I mean, that's the thing in this game. For some reason, there's an item that lets you make someone fall into a pit. And if you do it to a villager, they're angry at you. I mean, I had Lucky the dog that was um, injured, right? And I put one outside of his house, so... He moved away. It has no other function, no. I think it's just used to mess with people that visit your island. That would be the only other purpose I could see for it. I suppose if you do want your neighbors to move, yeah, you could anger them that way, just... I love when they whistle Funky Town. <laughs> Alright, give me the guilt trip. If it isn't, well, been a while. I'm not gonna pry into what you've been doing while you were gone. Glad you're okay. Uh, you, you are okay, right? I was gone one week. Just, well, maybe a, a little bit over a week. It's probably closer to two, but still, that's no need for concern. Aren't I a mayor? Like, I, I, I maybe went on a business trip. Where is this last fossil? walk past it a bunch of times. This one is, is hidden somewhere, very, very out of view, so just pay close attention. If you see it, yell out, I don't mind. How 
had a weird dream that I was playing the puzzle game I was playing the other night. Only... I got up to a later stage and it started doing things from Catherine. So I was like, oh cool, you, you can hang off edges now. had a dream about Minecraft a little while ago. What, that you were in Minecraft or that you were playing it? The game I'm talking about that I had a dream of, um, it's called Pull Blocks. Or Push Mode, depending on where you live. And the premise is pretty simple, it's just... These characters that almost look like they're in the Kirby universe, so it's pretty cutesy. And you just have to pull these blocks out to rescue children that are trapped in a playground. It sounds simple, but some of the puzzles took, like, a good 15 minutes. And started playing Minecraft again. <laughs> that does happen. Sounds like a very safe playground. Oh no, the best part is the person who makes the blocks comes in and is like, oh yeah, we have a training area. So they kind of double down, like, this person is making more of these things, but there's like currently 250 children trapped. Because that's how many stages there are, so it's just like, what? This old, this old geezer is authorizing more of these playgrounds. When there's already a bunch of children trapped in them, like, what's- what's the go? But it is a very fun game. I got it because of, uh, the eShop for the Wii U and the, the 3DS shutting down. So I just picked up a bunch of games that were digital only. So, I'll play them all at some point. Where is this fossil? <laughs> Where is... There's four. Um, there's usually four each day. Unless one of the spots was taken up by the, the, the troll spot. Maybe that's it. Maybe there isn't four today, like one of them is just a troll. But I just don't want to run into it later and then just have to go back to the museum. If I can't find it, I'll just move on. I'll just assume that that spot was was counted. Well, I think we need a new way of saying hello. Not my usual hello there. I think I've come to trust you enough to choose one. How about it? Sure. What should it be? Um, I'm not feeling very creative, so hoi! Hoi! Yes, you over there. Hoi! Oh, sorry, I just wanted to see if it works on days when I wake up on the wrong side of the bed. 
That's perfect, Will. I'll use that from now on. Thank you. <laughs> Damn it. I thought I just thought I, I should have just done the, the Navi greeting, just hey. Okay, I give up. This fossil is not here. You know, if if I had more time slash could be more bothered, I'd I'd program the bot to be a bit smarter and just auto answer certain questions. Hmm. Like I don't know, off the top of my head, like someone saying can they join as their very first message. <laughs> Okay. Oh, right. I have to identify first. I always forget that. Assess. Okay. How many? All of them? One of Just one. Okay. They are looking for people to play with. No, I know. But... I guess it's the wrong way to go about it. It's just... Get to know a person. <laughs> It's a bit strange to start off like that, yeah. Yeah. But I mean... In the context of streaming, it's just, I don't know. I think it comes from, like, wanting to find someone to play with for sure, but then it's also, like, a bit of an attention thing as well. Uh, I'll sell the other two parts here. I've always described it as, like, imagine you and your friends are hanging out playing games. There's a knock at the door and someone's like, hey, can I play? And you don't know that person at all. Like, what would you say? What, like, getting on stream? Yeah, I mean... Just coming from the experiences that I've seen, it's generally a younger audience wanting to, like, jump on a Discord call with the streamer and play games, and it's just... I definitely do that stuff with, with people that, you know, I've gotten to know. And, uh... You know, I value their friendship. But someone for the first time, it's, I don't know. <laughs> Again, it tends to be like a younger crowd that does that, so. That's the other thing. I, I just, I don't have any real interest with playing games with a younger audience. It's just... It's not me. You barely ask the people you know IRL to, if they want a game. <laughs> yeah, well, everyone's different.
I also like playing games alone quite a bit. <laughs> Even ones that I guess are semi-social. Like this one's semi-social. But I mean in this one, like, the multiplayer, unless I'm not mistaken, it's just someone comes to your island and then you kinda run around together. It's like, dude, I don't wanna do that. I wanna I wanna do stuff. I wanna earn money. I wanna get my fountain made. I wanna get my bridge finished. I want to get these villagers to stop making passive-aggressive comments that I've been missing for like two weeks. <laughs> I'll swap it with this lemon. Games you normally don't enjoy can be fun with friends, but to you, gaming is something you do on your own. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just think, like, when it comes to a streamer, like, being asked that, a lot of the time, the answer's gonna be no, and the person generally just leaves immediately. Or they get angry. Like, I've gotten both. And I know other people have gotten both. I feel like I'm putting my tools in the top row constantly and then they just keep getting moved. I don't know why. There are only few games you would actively seek to play with others. I imagine, like, Terraria is one of them. Oh my god. There what? There it is! <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> How many times did I walk past this? No coupons, alright. Terraria would be a first choice, yeah, that makes sense. For me, multiplayer has become this thing where... It's only games that... Are, are just stuff that I, you, you pick up and it doesn't matter, right? It's kind of... You just have a, a gaming session and then, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't have another one for months. Those are the kind of multiplayer games that I play. But stuff where it's kind of like... You want to progress, but then you have to organize with others. I, I only like doing those when everyone's kind of on the same page and is like, yeah, let's do this on a, on a semi-frequent basis. Otherwise, it's just like, you're chasing up people, and then you don't progress, and it's just... Sucks when you sit around waiting, yeah. And I don't know, the group of friends that I had, like, back in the day... I would be the one that would be chasing people up a lot, and I just, I don't know. You get over it. When's the Nintendo Direct? Uh, 1am. So, it's a while away. But I haven't played Animal Crossing in a while, so... That's why I'm here. But 
but I'd rather not wake up and be spoiled, <laughs> so. Also, time zones. Yeah, time zones are a problem. They are. Am I staying up for it? Of course I am. That's why I'm playing this. I'll be able to put in a couple hours into this because I've been neglecting this game and yeah, I'll get to watch it, go to sleep, and then not wake up tomorrow morning and have it spoiled immediately. It's only 10 minutes and it's just talking about Zelda, so it's gonna show Tears of the Kingdom properly for the first time. I mean, I guess the other thing is, like, when it comes to arranging games, it's, it's harder when you're an adult and you have work or responsibilities. It's just, it becomes a lot more to be able to have a time where you get together with your friends and just play games on a regular basis. that they show the fact that this game is going to have dungeons. That'd be cool. That'd be an awesome confirmation. Because the only thing we really know is that it's set in the same world, but like what they've done to this world, we don't know yet. So I'm hoping we'll know that at the very least. Starting donation. Uh, is that all the fruit trees? No, there's still a few. I'm hoping that with Diablo 4, it's just one of those games that can play it on a semi regular basis with people, but I don't know. What I played with the beta was fun. But maybe it's just one of those things that, like, the days of when I could play that, like, a Diablo game every day, practically. Just, they're not a thing anymore. Look who we have here, it's bro. Long time no see, how have you been? <laughs> Just, I still have several guilt trips to listen to. this fountain here because 
This villager would have no doubt put their house directly in front of mine. <laughs> I have no control over where they place their houses. Okay, hang on. I think we're good with fruit now. Okay. Oh, hello there. Welcome. See, no guilt trip. Just happy to see me. When is he gonna wake up? I got the feeling I have to spend money much like the shop. But I think all the stuff in here currently is mine. I don't want to buy that. <laughs> I think all this stuff is mine. I might just have to let uh, the villagers come in here and buy stuff and then just leave empty spots so then they can put stuff up for sale. We should probably look up how this works, but for now. Okay. I'm honestly surprised I didn't have a dream about the fishing thing yesterday, and instead I dreamt about the, the chill game. <laughs> oh, I swear if I have to go on another, like, four hour tangent to get a heart container, I'm gonna lose it. That's dedication. No, you, like... I don't know if you've been keeping up, Nick, though, but like, the last four Zelda games I've played, I've had to spend multiple hours on one heart piece. For different reasons. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, think last, I think last night broke me a little. What do you want? Rawr, perfect timing, achoo. Oh yeah, Will. This is gonna sound weird, but can you bury this time capsule for me? Apparently, it's a super lucky day. Okay. Alright. Haven't been tuning in for Zelda. That's fair. Well. Yeah, I mean... Not exaggerating when I say four hours. The first time it happened, it was because I misread some instructions, and so I went on a wild goose chase and went around the whole map, basically. Only to discover, oh crap, I read this wrong. So that was four hours. The next one, it was, I had to collect 130 collectibles, which doesn't sound bad. But those collectibles are behind a gacha game that you have to spend shells that you find in the world. And every time you get a collectible, the chances of getting a unique one decreases. So by the time you get to the halfway mark, you have to like have a large amount of shells, otherwise you can't do it. So I left that to the end thinking it's going to be okay. Nope, spent four hours at this machine. Doing various different things to try and speed it up. Four hours. Then, <laughs> again, it happens. I guess not with a heart piece. That one was fine. Twilight Princess was all right. But I did spend ages looking for something. So again, four hours. 
And now Phantom Hourglass, it's like, oh, to get the final heart container, you need to catch a rare fish. This fish has just a random chance of appearing, and it's super hard to catch. Four hours. I'm just thinking where to bury this thing so then I don't accidentally unearth it. Unlucky. Yeah. Well. I'm honestly surprised anyone watched. <laughs> Nice, relaxing looking game. It is gammy compared to what I was doing yesterday. It is. Hello. I'll bury it next to this so then I know. Just don't touch it next to the shop. Confirming seem to be into it, judging by the activity. <laughs> Not just confirming, but a few others. I guess it's just, you know, laughing at another person's misery. Did I just bury the fossil? I buried the fossil, not the time capsule. Wait, what's the time capsule? She didn't get. Oh, it's here. My bad. No, I just mean like I I find it surprising people would watch <laughs> last night. Quite literally, this this is what it was. Okay, but just imagine Link in a boat. Wait for a minute, 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 wait for a minute. Did the fish appear? No? Okay, go go back to the island we were just on. <laughs> and come back outside. This is actually pretty representative of how long it took to do this. Okay, and then we wait another minute again to see if the fish appears. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> Three hours of that. I think the first hour of the fishing was me going around the map trying to find it, which did not work. And then the remaining three was, was that. Like, I... It was to the point where I was dragging random graphics onto the stream just to do something. So... Yeah. I tried to make it entertaining, but... I don't know. <laughs> Just... I... If you did sit and watch the whole thing, first of all, thank you, but I, I'm very impressed. With the patience. It's more patience than me. Maybe I'm just a little too self-conscious about stuff I do on stream sometimes. Like, it's probably perfectly fine. Alright, I'll go sell fruit and then... Identify the fossil and we'll go do stuff. Oh, you know what? I probably should have identified the fossil first, just in case. Doubles up. Just a sec. Bad for bladders, waking him up. Oh, 
Cool. All right. I think that's the second one I finished now. Also, hello, I assume Ethan, because it's missing an A. Thanks for popping in. Uh, now I can sell my fruit. Yeah, Nintendo hasn't put anything up on their YouTube channel, so I wonder how this is going to work. It is definitely today, like, I, I double-checked. I just hope I got the time right. <laughs> I want to sell. Oh. Missed up. You know, that's one thing I haven't stress tested is, um, what side of the fence I sit on when it comes to that fruit durian. It's one of those things that, uh, there's like a 50-50 chance. It's either, it smells normal or it smells like, uh, something is rotting. And it's, it's just a genetic thing. It's kind of the same with, like, uh, cilantro, like how that can taste like soap t to some people. I don't think I've ever been near one. You thought it smelled horrible to everyone. No, not at all. <laughs> A building was evacuated once. Uh, on my way to work, I just saw a building being evacuated and then later I found out that someone thought there was a gas leak. And it turned out it was just uh, an employee opening some durian fruit. So they had to evacuate a whole building. Because of course, like, if you suspect a gas leak, it's, it's bad, right? But, you know, to one person it was a delicious fruit that they were about to eat. To another person it was like a life or death situation. So, you know. It's a very, very, like, black and white thing. There's no in-between. Strange how genetics can change that. Yeah. I don't know what, what would cause it, but it is interesting. Especially when it comes to taste. Like, something tasting like soap. The thing that was the smelliest that you liked was cheese. Did not expect to like it. I haven't encountered smelly cheese yet. Um, but I mean, that's like what people are into cheese say. They say like the smellier the better. So I don't know. I I haven't really tried any fancy cheese. You know. I guess. <laughs> just haven't been in a circle of people that like, well, not even like that, I could afford it, right? Like, again, upbringing, poor immigrant family. We got, like, craft singles, and then eventually just whatever tasty cheese we could get. Although, we did get feta cheese, that was, like, wasn't really a luxury, it was because, um, there used to be a factory. Pretty much where we lived that made that cheese, and the whole s street stunk like cheese. So they were able to get that cheese pretty cheap. Your French family had a cheese and crackers night. <laughs> That's very French sounding. But also something I would probably enjoy. Like, 
I do like a cheese and meat platter. Gee, it's not like I got enough of fishing yesterday. <laughs> Here I am voluntarily fishing. After the disaster in Zelda. But I mean, this is how you make money, at least a little bit of it. Alright, if you were to recommend a smelly cheese for me to try, that you think is good, what would be a cheese? If I was to be adventurous and just be like, okay, one night I'm just gonna do it. I'll get I'll get some some of those twiggy sticks. And then I'll get some dip, some crackers, and whatever cheese you recommend, and then I'll watch a movie. Broaden my horizons a little, like... I feel like that's something that I should have done by now. Have some sort of fancy cheese. It sounds like a good time. It, I mean, it is. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm kind of serious. But it'd be one of those things that, like... If I go to the... To a deli, I wouldn't know where to look, like... Where the food is, you're just trying to bake something every meow and then that isn't a disaster. But you've had fancy cheese before, like, you have the experience. Me being a foodie, I just, it's just, I've been to... Okay, I've been to restaurants. That's about the extent of it. And then grew up in, like, a multicultural suburb. So, like, experience different kinds of food from different countries, so... I'm aware of... Foods from other countries. But when it comes to stuff like... I mean, cheese... Cheese is like... If you're going so Growing up, if you're going something above, like, supermarket cheese, that's fancy. And that's what I'm talking about, is like... I've never really had the circumstance of having... Something where I've gone to like a deli and then asked for a particular type of cheese and you know It comes from a block and they slice it or something like that or maybe it's just a whole wheel or I just I, I haven't had that experience Also, I just realized what I should be doing and why I'm missing because my headphones aren't plugged in directly to the DS So I need to find my cable one sec You've had fancy cheese maybe three times. Three times more than me. <laughs> the thing is, you weren't the one buying it. It was your aunt and uncle. Okay. That's fair. I mean, you could loosely describe it, and then I could ask. I bet if you loosely describe it, I could find it. Because if you see a picture of it, no doubt, you'll see, oh yeah, that was what I ate. There we go, headset's in. Now I should be better at fishing.
If I know what tastes are like, I can actually ask for recommendations. There, I assume. Like, behind the counter. Yeah, but then there's no... There's no conversation. Like, I can't go to that person later and be like, Hey, that recommendation you gave me was great. Or there's no accountability later where I'm like, What was that cheese? What was that? What did it smell like a foot? Okay, we have like about an hour until the direct, so... I've tried many a thing recommended by by people. A few things from viewers. Like I've tried I've tried a few things. Some I enjoyed, some I haven't. Is it midnight? It is, yeah. But I believe Nick is it this weekend coming up? It's either this weekend coming up or next weekend. Uh clock goes back an hour, so Time zone will be better. So, yeah. Just change yours, yeah. So, ours is usually not that far after. Do we do daylight savings? Uh, not every state. But the state that I'm in, yes. It's one of those things, to be honest, that I think they're gonna eventually just get rid of. It's one- it's one of those things that's just a result of... I guess a different world that we don't live in anymore. Like, when it was relevant <laughs> to know, to have hours roughly align with the sun. We were told that wasn't the case down under. Uh, that person was probably from Queensland, or they went to Queensland. That's- that's the state that doesn't do daylight savings on the east coast. Um, but everywhere else I believe does it. Here it was so you could go pick potatoes, need a farm ants. yeah. But I guess that's the thing, it was from... I guess dictating the hours where people worked around the sun, right? It's- it's not really necessary anymore. On the one hand, I like that it aligns with other time zones better. But on the other hand, um, like the fact that it gets dark at like 5 p.m. And I know, I know, look, I, I'm talking to someone where, like, <laughs> when winter hits. <laughs> but, you know, when it gets dark at 5 p.m. Compared to, say, like right now where it's 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. I, I, I do miss that. I prefer it when it's like the other way around. But, you know. Why can't I... 
bridge, please. Okay. It's all up to preference, yeah. I don't think it would be that big of a deal if it was like 6 p.m. and the sun was setting. Like, it seems to make more sense to me. No, wait. It'd be the other way around. It would be like 5 p.m. would be the norm, and then in summer, it would be like instead of 8, 9, it would be 7 or 8, which is just. It's not that different. I don't know why. Maybe it's the sunrise that's more important than the sunset. I don't know. You don't really notice that unless you have a steady schedule. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> my schedule's different now that I work from home. Oh man, I tell you, I, I do not miss having to get up. And just doing the, the travel to work thing. Bit depressing to go to work when it's still dark, and then dark again by the time you get home. Yeah, well, that's, that's what happens here as well. like winter, love snow and candlelight. I think winter's the better season. I've always liked it. I like staying warm. I like wearing hoodies. I like all that stuff. Like hot beverages or like some good soup. What's not to like? Well, I mean, I guess there's temperatures so cold that your face hurts when you step outside. Uh, slipping on ice. Which I've heard is an experience, but, you know. <laughs> Do you want to know what the Australian equivalent of slipping on ice is? The Australian equivalent of slipping on ice is touching something metallic and not realizing it is hot, and you burn your hand on it. There's a video that went viral that sums it up. It's... There's dudes outside, and it's one of those public barbecues, like the grills. So, you know... He pours water on the grill and it's bubbling up and it's like, this isn't even turned on. In Australia, in summer, it gets so hot that you don't even need to... T and before he finishes his sentence, he puts his hand down to rest on the metallic surface and it's, it's he just like burns his hand. Just, you know, forgets, oh wait, the whole thing is hot and not just the grill area. So that's our equivalent of slipping on ice. <laughs> you did have a week or two where if you tried to go to the store, you fell. What? <laughs> oh no. Oh no, I'm gonna- in I'm going to be hospitalized if I experience winter for real, aren't I? It was too slippery. You cannot make it down a hill. I oh, know a hill would be, uh, would be bad. This, this is bad, but like, you know, 
As you were telling that story, I'm just picturing this theme playing. <laughs> just trying to go shopping, and you know, you just walk out the door, immediately it's just... <laughs> oh dear. You live on the hill, it's not big, but it's not big enough. No, but I mean, the slightest inclination involves a lot of physical exertion. And if there's snow involved, like, I don't understand how, how people can function, like, Surely Europeans are more fit on an average just because they have to put up with that, like, they do more exercise as a result, having to go through snow. Have I seen that vid of the people who look like they're break dancing on ice, kind of like that? Yeah, I've seen that. You enjoy shoveling snow, really? Or shuffling? Shoveling or shuffling? Both works, okay. <laughs> You don't have to do it at 6 a.m. Yeah, I guess. If you have to get up and do it before you go to work, that would suck. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just... I've had people send me photos of snow or videos where it's just been... It's snowed where they are overnight, and I just- I just can't compute it. It just looks like they're on a whole different planet. If you like instant results, and with snow you can make it look pretty- oh, like- Like, as if you were trimming a hedge? It was shoulder height in winter, but you're short. Okay, so it would be like waist height for me. Ha <laughs> ha! Just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, it would, it would probably be like... ...above the stomach, most likely. Would it be that high? No, maybe, uh, I don't know. Look at how happy they are. I mean, I'm not that gigantic. Uh, I'm tall, but not gigantic. Two more. Fine, snowy weather really cozy. Can't relate, but I can just say rainy weather is cozy. It's when it melts the problem start, oh really? What kind of problems? See, these are things that I'm not aware of.
Then you get ice and slush. What's wrong with... Well, okay, ice you slip on. I know, I know that much, but slush? Is that just muddy snow? Slush sucks. Why does it suck? See how sheltered I am? <laughs> I feel like I'm like a child. Why? 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 Yeah, but why? Okay. It's ugly and dirty. Okay. But it doesn't have any disadvantages for it being there, other than it's just... It just looks dirty, that's it. Like, it's not a hazard, right? It's the same for me with Aussie stuff, though. Aussie stuff? Like what? I mean... The thing is, right, like... I could send you a picture of Summer. And really, it's... it's Aside from the fact that it's geographically different, like, you know, obviously... Street signs are gonna be different. And there's gonna be maybe some different trees to some degree. You can still relate with the surroundings. It's kind of like, yeah, I've seen stuff similar. Sure, the buildings might be different. Sure, the roads might be different. Maybe the cars as well, and the trees. But it's something that you can imagine a similar situation, because you can't get a picture of how hot it is, really. You can get a video if, like, I pour a liquid on, on a hot surface, sure. But, like, in general, it's harder to convey how hot it is, really. Whereas in when I see snow, it's just like, I can't imagine that happening here. Unless I go to like a mountain in the middle of nowhere on a particular day of the week in one, in one week. It just looks so foreign. The heat is strange to you. No, I, I, I get that. I talk about like it being 25 outside and it's like, oh no, that's way too hot. Wait, and how do I like to go to the store? What do you mean? You walk for a couple of hours or so to do grocery shopping. Oh, and me, it's just like a few minutes away. Yeah, but I... I mean, I live in, in the inner city. Could not do that in the heat. Okay, yeah, I, I don't do that in the heat. <laughs> I take my car. <laughs> Air-conditioned car. And then it's just, I have to bear the 30 seconds that's like the walk from the car to the store. I do not walk in that heat ever. Okay, I've done it a couple times. Not to do stuff, just to go for a walk. And that's just to sweat things out. The grocery shopping, I would never do that in that sort of heat. Like, I take my car. The car is air conditioning. <laughs> and the store has air conditioning. <laughs> Don't have a car. Okay. That's fair. But I can say the same thing about snow. It's like, I can't imagine walking... In what you describe as, like, snow that goes up to your waist, if not higher. <laughs> Carrying groceries. I feel like that would take the same amount of physical exertion, if not more. You have a moped license, don't think the AC is good enough. Oh no, definitely not for, for the Australian summer. Definitely not. And, you know, the sun is a death ray, so, you know, 
you will you'll get sunburnt very quickly. No, I feel like river fishing just doesn't get you the same amount of money. But I'm doing this, I guess, because I don't really fish in the river and I I might be missing some fish variety. There are people who are employed to deal with the snow. It's just your private property, right, that you have to deal with yourself. Right. But I mean, it's kind of the same here. Like, we have city landscaping in general. And, uh, like, in country areas, there's, there's, like, a group that helps out with, like, trees or stuff falling down or things blocking, so. I like the idea of having a house that has land with it, but I don't, I don't like the effort involved in upkeeping it. Wait, school roads are prioritized. It can take a while if there are unexpected heavy snow until they hire enough extra help. Or, what, the school deals with it themselves? Do they just get a bunch of children to shovel it? <laughs> Alright, kids, it's, it's time to go on an excursion. We're gonna go on a field trip outside. Bring your shovels. Oh you, oh, you have fleas. You have brought the plague to our town. You moved in and you have brought the plague. There we go. <laughs> what? I had a flea on me. I was wondering why I was so itchy. Thanks. Achoo! They have brought the plague. They are sick and they have also got fleas. The roads are plowed first, okay. Gotcha. Different planet. One fear I have of like going to a country that has a real winter is just being uh, underdressed. <laughs> just bringing clothing that I think, yeah, you know what? That's going to be fine. And then I get there and I'm just... I just die immediately. Oh, apparently I've already donated a flea, okay. I may as well sell since I'm up here. I want to sell this flea. Take this flea.
We have mountain roads that are closed because of weather conditions. Oh, we... Yeah, I mean... We have similar things, but for different reasons. <laughs> Not snow. Sometimes in summer, it's just like, uh-uh, you're not allowed to go here, because it's on fire. Or, like, a tree has fallen down. <laughs> it's on fire. I, I wish I was joking. Okay, uh, there's also the money stone. I still haven't found the money stone, so let's just look for that now. We're literally opposite land. <laughs> I think to most people, yeah. I think it's just one of those things you have to experience to know what I'm talking about. It's not as different as you would think. Especially the whole thing where people think that just simply going to Australia means there's like a high likelihood you're going to get attacked by some animal. That's it's not the case at all. I've had people ask you about polar bears. Were they American? By any chance? They were American? Yeah, questions like that generally come from Americans. Sometimes jokingly, sometimes actually serious. There's a part of Noi that has polar bears. Yeah, but it'd be as stupid as like us just picking the most remote place in America and just asking someone that lives in LA, hey, did you come across this? Do you use bald eagles to send your mail? Like carrier pigeons? It's far north, almost the North Pole. Yeah. It's it's remote. And that's what I mean. Like, with Australia and its deadly animals, it's kind of the same thing. It's just, you have to be pretty much in the middle of nowhere to run into that stuff. So, yeah. If you're in the middle of the desert or, like, in a tropical area, sure. Downtown Melbourne or Sydney? Never. <laughs> Not in a million years.
If you ever go, you will put a piece of bread on the ground and call me to make a world sandwich. <laughs> world sandwich. Does that mean I have to go to Antarctica? Ugh. I mean, the furthest I could go from a south perspective is Tasmania. Which, Tasmania's pretty nice. Not in the most southern point of, of Australia, but... Going south is not that bad. Oh no, pretty far south. Not the southern point of... I'm... Um, southern point of mainland Australia, but there is an island state further south. Which people forget about. Or in the case of when we were playing, um, the drawing games, people just accidentally draw New Zealand instead. That was great. Uh... But you know what, like, I could reliably draw a shape of Europe, but it would prob- it would be wrong to some degrees, like, I'm sure I would make a mistake and miss some spots. I found a list of the top 17 stinky cheeses. So. <laughs> this, um, this article is interesting. Just the way it starts out. It, it, it really sells it. It really sells it. it. Do you enjoy notes of body odor and dirty socks with hints of laundry? Sour laundry and wafts of barnyard. If so, this list is for you. Although many cheeses have a bit of pugnancy about them. Okay. So these are the cheeses. Camembert. I've had that before. Okay. I, I, but that wasn't that bad. I, no. I can't pronounce these. A lot of these, they're very French. Um, but let's see the French ones. Yeah, Camembert is like very mild. It's not, it's not smelly at all. There's one called Ami du Chambertin. Probably butchered that pronunciation. The smell hovers somewhere between barnyard and putrid. But the flavor is of grassy butter and cream. <laughs> That's, uh, hmm. <laughs> oui, oui, baguette. Omelette du fromage. Uh. So the, the oldest one, Levaro Munster. It's named after an old village in Mer uh, Normandy, 
This cow's milk cheese is one of the oldest in the region. Don't be scared by its aroma, which may be best described as hardcore barnyard. Oh my god. There's one that's called raclette. And it's supposed to be really good, but the internet says it smells like dirty foot with a vomit fragrance. So... I don't know. There was more like smelly, really smelly feet. Well, it might be raclette. Was it like soft? Was it soft or was it hard? It just smelled like someone desperately needed a bath on her. Okay. The fanciest cheese that I probably had as a kid was the red cow. <laughs> That's as fancy as it got for me, the red cow. You would not willingly eat it without seeing others do it. Right. Okay. Yeah, but see, that's why I need the recommendation, because then at least I have the connection of someone has tried it and says it's good. And I'm not going in blind. The adults could have fooled you, but your cousin was young. She would not have been able to pretend. Yeah, I guess that's true. But then I know kids that are into, like, adult stuff sometimes. That eat foods that most kids wouldn't. Trusted her not to lie. <laughs> Fair. I think the only thing that I have had exposure to that I guess some people consider somewhat, uh, not fancy, but it's just, it's not normal for everyone, and that's spicy food, so I've had a lot of different kinds of spicy food and I have a pretty high tolerance for it. So that's probably, like, the only thing that I have, uh... Particularly when it comes to different... countries' version of spicy. Like, that I can make recommendations on. Do you like spicy food? What's the spiciest thing you've had? that you can remember. Don't think your tolerance is high. Gotcha. I think one of the spiciest things I had, um... was like this... this dish from the Sichuan province of China. It was, it's a bunch, and you, I know, haha, but it, it is a bunch of chicken chopped up into chunks. I mean, they, they have bones in it and everything, right? Because the bones get flavoring. 
And then it is pretty much sitting in just a pile of chilies. And then they add peppercorns to it as well. And so the oils from the chilies and the chicken and everything else just kind of melts together. And you just pick out the chicken parts. And uh, you have that with like rice or something. And the chicken was so good, but man, had a kick to it. Something like jalapeno. Is that what you would say the highest is? It's pretty decent. Not sure what it was called. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't eat like just straight up peppers. But if it's cooked with stuff, sure. There was also this very spicy pizza where like the translation to it was um i can't remember if it was ass bruiser or if it was like burning ass but that was that was the it was like it was in italian and it was a pepperoni pizza with cheese but then they put like these chilies on top that i don't even know what they were but man that was that was something but good it was very good Uh, hang on. Yeah, I put clothing here. What is this? I bought this to wear. There we go. So yeah, I mean, you have- you definitely have, like, a higher tolerance than most people. I mean, I know people that can't have something like fast food spicy, like, you know, KFC or McDonald's doing a spicy take on something. There's this Indian place you've been to a couple of times with a 1 to 5 scale in hotness. Wait, you think 4 is... You eat it, but you should have done one less. <laughs> That's my, that makes sense. It depends how true the scaling is. But it's still above average. It's still above average. If you can have spicy potato chips, then yeah, that's that's considered above average. Like, I mean, my favorite potato chips are, like, the jalapeno chili salt. They are so good. But they can make me cough. Thing is, you don't really know because the normal there is bland. Eh, that makes sense. Because I'm guessing, like, the food traditionally there doesn't have much spice to it. Here it's a different case. It's just because multicultural melting pot, particularly where I am, it's just spices have been integrated quite a bit. Like, you know, one of the, uh, the iconic Australian foods, the, the meat pie, there's a, uh, Thai green curry version of that, and it's pretty good. Spicy, but, you know, a lot of places have it on the menu, alongside the, uh, the traditional one.
Okay, hold up a sec. Let me just... I just want to see if they have this ready or not. I hate auto-playing stuff on YouTube. Where is this going to be held? Unless it's just a video that's going to get published, which might be the case. I don't think it's a live stream. It's possible that they might just publish a video, so we'll see. But um, there's like 10 minutes remaining. So... Your favorite chips are called hot and spicy. <laughs> I mean, I would try that. I would have an association with KFC, because that's just what the, the, the chicken's called. Like, when they do it hot, it's hot and spicy. It's tough times right now, like, for me to get my favorite chips. I have to go when uh, the catalogs start, otherwise it's like $8 a bag. Mexican Fiesta. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> es una fiesta de sabor. I imagine that's like, that would probably be the slogan, it's like, it's a... Uh, it's a, uh... Flavor Festival, jeez, I blanked out. Because <laughs> I don't use Spanish that much, like, sometimes... It takes a little bit for me to get into gear and be able to speak it properly. And not make it sound like I'm thinking about it too much. Have some diversity there, but don't go out much. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I was suggesting there was no diversity, it's just... On average, I guess, people aren't exposed to foods that are spicy, I guess, or like, exotic? I don't know. find the, the fake rock. I think I just need to practice my Spanish a bit more. It wouldn't be hard for me to get proficient in it, like... I'm alright at it. It's just I need to expand my vocabulary. And learn to read properly. I can read a bit, just not completely fluent. You should explore. You should. It's good to get to know your, your hometown or surroundings. You'll find stuff that, uh, yeah, didn't know was there. I mean, I always make it a habit of try to catch up with someone and go somewhere. Every now and then. Even if it's just like a cafe and just have a coffee or some breakfast or something. Or lunch.
And there's nothing wrong with going there by yourself. You just need to get out of the, the habit of, like, thinking, Oh no, it's the worst thing in the world to go somewhere by yourself. It's not. No one says anything. No one cares. Also always changes. Yeah, exactly. Whenever I need to go get a haircut, like I go, I go pretty far. I could go somewhere local, but the, I make a trip out of it. I go, I get a haircut, then I go to this uh, Vietnamese restaurant that I've always enjoyed. And, you know, I go there. I get a table for myself, I sit there, and I have some really, really good noodles. How often do I go? Every time I have a haircut. Every time I need to have a haircut. So, like, it can vary between maybe one and a half months, longest three months. And I'll do it. I'll go for the drive, get the haircut, and then go to this restaurant. And I just sit there and I have a really nice meal. And I don't think about, oh no, I'm sitting down at this restaurant by myself. No, it's like no one's looking. <laughs> just go there, I have my meal, and I enjoy it. It's great. It's not something I always did, but just, it's... Instead of waiting and being like, hey, let's go here, and then someone's like, nah, it's too far away. Do I have a favorite hairdresser or barber? I wouldn't say favorite, it's just habit. And because, again, proximity to the restaurant, that's why I go there. They don't know me, like, it's not like I go in there and they're like, Hey, Will, or like, hey, it's you. No. It's just... Nostalgia's sake, you know? It's the, the area, I guess. But also just the food as well. And when I go there, there's very good Asian grocery stores compared to where I am. One, they're cheaper. Two, they have a bigger variety. So, like, I can stock up on some good instant noodles. So, uh, I make a day out of it. Don't think you've set foot in a salon in a decade. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It saves you money. There's no problem. What is that? What am I seeing here in this corner? Oh, it's the boundary. I mean, I think eventually, like, it depends how it goes with me. I might... Because I have, like... My dad doesn't have much hair, and... But I do have uncles that have hair. So it's like a 50-50 chance. It's kind of... I'll either end up where I'll just shave my head, because it's just like, okay. Lost cause. Or I'm just gonna have hair, and whatever. Like... I don't really do much with mine either. It's just... Let it grow out to the point where it's like, okay, this is kind of a pain to deal with. I'll go get it cut short. I'm going back to fishing. But I mean, if you can take care of your own hair, hey, that saves money. And if it looks fine, there's... I don't have to go to a salon to do it. I think just getting out and going there is is part of it as well. It's just I'm sure a lot of people could do it themselves, but I think just the, the concept of going there and maybe doing other stuff as well, that's I guess the appeal. 
When guys start balding, taking it all off might look better. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's definitely some stigma around not having hair, but, like, I don't care. The thing is, I, I would not associate with someone that would look at a person that way and, you know, really look down on them for something like that. So it doesn't concern me. It's just like, I wouldn't have people like that in my life. So if, if I did get to the point where hair loss was a problem, I'd be just like, all right, off it goes. But I mean, I'm in my mid thirties and it's, it's fine. So, we'll see where it ends up. Yeah, I got the feeling they're just gonna publish a video. Because there's no live event, so hang on. Let me just make sure. 7 a.m. PT, that specific time. So let's just see, 7 a.m. PT to Melbourne. Just triple checking. 1 a.m. Yep, so it should be in three minutes. Um, well, you know, I just wanted to play this until the video is out, so we'll... We'll do that until then. Um, you heard there are meds you can take, but there are undesirable side effects for for preventing hair loss, probably, but, yeah. It's like, I don't know, I don't see it as worth it. It's one of those things where eventually it's just, it's gonna, it's gonna get you one way or another. I think be comfortable with who you are and don't worry about how other people see that. Who's releasing a video? Uh, Nintendo is showing off Tears of the Kingdom in two minutes for the first time, properly. Not just, like, a, a teaser trailer. So I'm gonna just watch that live, because if I don't, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and it's just gonna be spoilers, so I wanna experience it for the first time. But hello, Jeffrey. How's the stream been? It's been fine. Just chilling, talking, honestly. About snow, about spicy food, about how people draw Australia incorrectly, smelly cheese, and if there are recommendations people have, because I haven't really tried, like, fancy cheese ever. So I was like, if I was to go one evening, I want to watch a movie, I want to get some cheese, I want to get some crackers, I want to get some meat and just have a platter and watch a movie. What fancy cheese would you recommend? Do we eat Baby Bell? I think I know what that- is that the one that's like a red wheel? Or like a red circle? It's like a wax- wax sort of covering. If so, yes. We have that here. What I'm talking about is something that I would go to a deli. And it wouldn't be in any packaging. Like, maybe it might have a sticker on it, but like... It wouldn't be a supermarket thing, you know? I'd be going to a deli to get it. Do you have dabble with fake long red nails of wax once or twice? How long, though? Comically long or just standard long? Also, it is 1 a.m. I don't- I don't see this. Let me go to their Twitter.
Unless... Sorry, chat. I'm just trying to... I'm trying to see what's going on with this video. That's fine. Baby bell size. <laughs> oh, no. You have a big wax ball from baby bell wrappers. Is that weird? Wait, like keeping them? I mean, how big? Listen, I I have a cousin that kept, um... Like, uh, bottle caps and stuff. Do you at least clean it? Because, I mean... Alright, if you go to the effort of cleaning it... It's about the size of a baseball. That's pretty big. But I guess that's the question, is... Do you clean it? If you clean it, fine. If you don't, that cheese residue... Yeah. That's where my concern would be. It would just be... Hmm. I mean, a little weird, but it's fine. There's nothing wrong with being a little weird. I need to go sell. I'm also trying to... Um, multitask here and try to see what's going on with this video. Oh, there we go. Alright, it's up. Okay, so let me just wrap this up. Uh, it's just a video chat. It's not a live stream. But it, it literally just got published now, so... Let's, uh, let's wrap up Animal Crossing and we'll go check out the first view of, uh... Well, gameplay of Tears of the Kingdom. If you're not down for that and don't want to get spoiled, it's understandable. But I feel like if I don't watch this tomorrow, it's just going to be a minefield avoiding this. So I think I'd rather experience it fresh and in an unspoiled perspective. So we'll do that. Let me just sell, save, and uh, we'll get going on that. But if you're here for Animal Crossing and we're here chilling and talking, yeah, appreciate you popping in. Hope you did enjoy. And I will try not to let another two weeks go without playing this game. <laughs> I don't want- I don't want to receive lip from my villagers again, so, yeah. Okay, uh, we always have to save and quit, otherwise we risk losing data, so. Okay. And there we go. Alright, and uh, that'll do it. Yeah, if you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for uh, tuning in. Alright, let's get this uh, thing ready. <laughs> Give me a minute, chat. But uh, yeah, bye YouTube.